Good afternoon, everybody. Today, uh, the topic is crush job search rejection. And my goal is that we learn new ways to cope with and turn job search rejection into positive new learning outcomes. Some of the topics we'll, we'll talk about are job search. It's really ugly. Why this ugly topic? Ghosted. Ageism is real. And ways to crush job search rejection. It's a rough road. This job search business is ugly, painful, and stressful, even in the best of times. Nowadays, we add COVID-19 with no end in sight, businesses closing, 60 million people, uh, Americans unemployed, millions more underemployed, or have finished collecting benefits, many new layoffs, especially challenging our older and underserved populations, more college graduates with no jobs. The competition is more intense than ever. It's especially hard to handle rejection when you're worried about your financial situation, how you're going to pay your bills, buy food, pay the rent. After submitting dozens of resumes and completing lengthy and annoying applications without hearing back, it's really hard to stay positive especially when you think you did exceptionally well in an interview and haven't heard back after several weeks. With job search, you'll be met with a great deal of rejection, even during the best of times. So buckle up because you're definitely in for a ride. Why this topic? As I often do, I choose a topic because I feel it's important, to, if it's important to me, it might be for you too. Someone very close to me recently interviewed really well with senior management. He then prepared extensively, assembled a stack of sample projects, drove six hours away for an all day series of interviews with other senior managers. After lunch, the momentum abruptly and drastically changed. The interview got cut short. An HR assistant entered the room, stated that the remaining interviews were canceled and she promptly escorted him out. The candidate felt like he was in a Twilight Zone episode where radar detected a gun in his pocket and he was evacuated with no explanation and zero follow-up from the recruiter or anyone else in the hiring process, even after repeated attempts to make contact to find out what went awry. Well, the fact is he was ghosted. I never even heard of this term until recently. Ghosting, also known as simmering or icing, is a term that describes the practice of ending, ending all communication and contact without any warning or justification and ignores any attempts to reach out for clarification. Has this uh, happened to anybody on this call today? Ever experienced being ghosted? Good. I, I personally cannot say that I have ever experienced that. Just like um, it's a first for you. It's a first for me also. Um, okay. Because usually you can at least call the switchboard. You know what I'm saying? Or, yeah. you know, but to just be totally, you can't contact like, like it never existed? No. Yeah. Never had yeah. Like that. Uh, needless to say, Joyce, this gentleman is so competent and capable. 30 plus years experience, manages multi-million dollars of capital projects, excellent references. He was so dejected, so humiliated and crushed. Did I say buckle up? Job search is brutal, more brutal than ever nowadays. It's not for the soft of mind, body or spirit. The process can feel inhumane disrespectful and downright discourteous. And if you can crush rejection, 
especially during your job search. I think you'll thrive during any new job you'll get. Human beings are resilient and tough, and we can handle tough things. We do it all the time. Did I say buckle up? Let's get ready. Whether we like it or not, whether we admit it or not, the interview process, despite all the anti-discrimination laws, this process is and likely will always be somewhat discriminatory. Let's face it, the company and the candidate are interviewing each other to screen out what does and doesn't work about the fit. As our population ages, age discrimination is more prevalent than ever. This is confronting and real, and I know it firsthand. You know that person I spoke about who was ghosted? In my heart of hearts, I really think it was age discrimination, plain and simple. When they met him in person, they saw the gray hair and maybe a bit of a rounded belly, and, and that crunched it for him. However, despite the, the negative stereotypes that older workers have less energy and are less productive, the data shows otherwise. According to research from Stanford on longevity, older workers are healthy, have a strong work ethic, are loyal to their employers, and are more likely to be satisfied with their jobs than their younger co workers. Another study showed that more people under 45 were exhausted uh, more than, uh, than those over 45, with the least being exhausted uh, population of those over 60. I thought that was pretty interesting. So if you, if you are concerned about ageism, you can try these ideas. Lead with energy instead of discussing your 30 years of experience. Show This is during the interview, of course. Show your excitement about the opportunity and the work you do. You might say, this is the work I love to do. But calling out your years of experience might intimidate the interviewer. Approach your interviews maybe as consulting conversations by demonstrating humility, showing curiosity and a learning mindset. Use good open-ended questions combined with engaged listening. This approach will not only be more compelling, but will also help you to show up more as a peer to your interviewers rather than a know-it-all. Given that collaboration is the norm for millennials, anything that signals a hierarchical style, like asking about title or span of control, might be a red flag about one's ability to fit into a culture where the work is co-created. So you really want to connect uh, with your interviewer, demonstrate warmth, kindness, maybe even a sense of humor. However, do not use dated references or self-deprecating humor like that was pre-internet or that was probably before your time. It's uncomfortable and alienating. Instead, show your ability to work well with diverse groups of people. Give examples of projects you led or, or collaborated on with teams of diverse cross-sections of the company, different function levels, etc. And you also want to look the part. You certainly shouldn't wear a, shouldn't wear a hoodie, but if necessary, keep, get some help in refreshing your wardrobe and accessories, and certainly inquire about the dress code for the company that you're interviewing with. But no matter how it hits us, whether we're too old, too young, too experienced, or too inexperienced, we will face rejection during the interview process. So how do we crush it? Let's talk about some techniques and some ways to cope with rejection that will help you turn it into a new opportunity, a new possibility for something fabulous. I say the first thing to do following a rejection is to bask. That is to allow yourself to be upset, to be angry, to feel despair, frustration. Most people would say, oh, don't feel bad. I disagree. We're human. When we put our hearts and souls into something and then get rejected, 
or worse yet, get ghosted, you are surely entitled to feel upset and frustrated. I knew in that moment that my friend was rejected. I just had to be there to simply listen, to validate his upset and allow him to feel and to vent. I strongly urge you to find someone with whom you can vent and share. Someone who cares about you and is willing to stand by and just get your disappointment and upset without criticizing you in any way. This helps you get over it much more quickly. Do all the venting you need to do, but don't do it on social media. More employers are looking to see how you present yourself and online and you'll come off as totally unprofessional. Be sure that after you vent to your closest allies, after you allow yourself to bask in the upset for a bit, then you must let it go and enter new conversations openly, freely, and with a positive outlook. How long do you think you should give yourself to bask or grieve or vent after not getting that job you thought you were going to get? What are your thoughts? I think at least three days. Okay. Because you can take a day for each one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Because when you get to that let it go part, you need to make sure the basking and the venting is over. And it should take you you know, about three days. That's what it usually takes me. I have to give myself, anytime I'm, I have disappointment or into situations that are beyond my control, you know, yes. that first day I can't sleep, This, you know, the second day, you know, it's not so painful. And by the third day, I can let it go. You know, okay. I, I can look at the, the, the positive side. Other thoughts? Thank you, Joyce. I think it's uh, depend on the work that you, if you like this work or not. So if you like to be one of this group or not. So if yeah. it's just, uh, just I want to work in this company and that's it for uh, for any reason and not passion on this work, uh, more on this work. Maybe it's, it's uh, easily to uh, deal with this rejection. But if oh. you like it, but if you like it, maybe it, it, it will take, take a time. Yeah. A, a, a bit longer. Very good point. If you have a great deal of passion for it, it might take you a bit longer. Yeah. Well, the fact is there's no rule of thumb here. Um, you need to take the time you need to. Um, but now let's talk about what to do next. So now that you've basked, you've vented and you let go, it's time to get real, to review, reflect, and refine your job search. Let your trusted ally know, your trusted friend, your, your mentor, uh, someone you know who cares about you. Let, let this person know you're ready to listen now to what he or she has to say. You're ready to make changes as needed so that you can be sure you're presenting yourself in the best possible way. Ask this trusted advocate for his or her honest evaluation, for constructive criticism for your elevator pitch, your resume, maybe your LinkedIn profile, your networking and social media strategy, your response to interview practice questions, You'll need to focus on things you can realistically change. Re remember, we talked about applying for stretch jobs. And, and of course, that's a good thing to do. But if the company wanted someone who is bilingual, you're, you're not going to take a course and instantly uh, become bilingual in another language. Upon further reflection, you might even realize the job wasn't quite right for, for you. Maybe you really didn't want to relocate after all, or, or when you learned more about the role, you really weren't excited about it or learning about what it would take to be successful in that job. Think about your learning and development priorities. You want your next job to really be a win-win for you and the company. Use your rejection, rejection experience to help you refine and refocus your future job searches. Now, um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, 
Would you, because I know we were using this scenario uh, about your friend, but because the, the friend was uh, ghosted, it, now that narrows the opportunity to find out why, what was wrong with, why, why I didn't get hired. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Sometimes you could call the employer back and say, you know, is there anything that you can um, offer for, if I can do better at my interviewing, you know, or, you know what I'm saying? You yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I will actually talk a little bit further about that uh, going forward in this oh, very okay. conversation, Joyce. Thank you okay. for that. Yes, indeed. Um, and I'm not telling you that, uh, he actually did the right thing. This is what I've learned since then, which is partly why I'm doing this webinar. Um, so, uh, continue reflecting, uh, and take notes for yourself on the interview process. Now consider your approach, your mindset and your attitude. Did you prepare well enough for the interview? Did you research the company, their mission, employees, products, and services? If you tell the truth, did you go in there with the job description highlighted with the specific requirements you knew you could fulfill? If you were the hiring manager, would you have hired you? How was your tone in the interview? Would you rather be with someone who is upbeat, a winner, or someone who is downtrodden? Could you have worked harder to build rapport with the interviewers? Did you focus too much on technical skills and not show your personality? Were there any questions you feel you could have answered better? Were you being energetic and positive? Or were you being robotic, nervous, desperate, angry, or otherwise uncomfortable with yourself or with the interviewer? Think about feedback from past rejections. Are there any recurring themes? Gather all the feedback you can from the recruiter and the employer. And you're right, Joyce, no matter how many times you ask, they may not respond. If the feedback feels a bit superficial or gener generic, don't be afraid to ask for more. But again, you may not get it and you just have to, to, to uh, move forward. Uh, let's see. Another thing about feedback, oh, as I said, you, you won't always get it after an interview, no matter how much you inquire. There's actually a school of thought, uh, Joyce, to ask for feedback even during the interview. For example, is there anything that I may have said or didn't say that would leave you less than 100% sure that I'm the right person for this position? I'm not sure I would ask that during an interview. Would you? Is that something you can see yourself asking during the interview? I, I don't know if I would phrase it that way, but I, would, I might say... Um... Is there any more information or is there anything else I can offer that would help you in making your decision? Yeah, very um, good. I'm similar, actually more, sim more similar, but maybe a little less assertive because I, I, I tend to be not that assertive. Yeah. Unless yeah. I was going to be going for like a sales job, maybe then I would be a little more assertive. Okay. So. Yeah, I wasn't solid on this approach either. I, I do like yours even better. It's a little softer, but yet it, it allows them to, to give you any feedback right there in that moment. And you still might ask for this feedback later on in the thank you letter, which we will talk about going forward. Um, another idea to crush this job search rejection is to manage your expectations. We know the road to success is never a straight line. There are many turns and cutoffs along the way. Applying for jobs is no different, and we know it's really hard. But the more you apply and get rejected, the more skilled and resilient you become in the process and improve your chances of getting hired. You may need to adjust your definition of a success. You may not get the exact title or, or dollar amount that you want. 
getting a new job is hard and it could also take a very long time. So you want to celebrate your victories along the way, such as getting the interview, get excited about a second round interview. Keep in mind that the odds are stacked against you. So if the offer does not materialize, understand it's part of the process and you'll only get better at it next time. To help crush rejection, understand you are not alone. Don't take it personally. Yeah, easier said than done, right? After you put your heart and soul into something. But recognize that many people are going through the same thing. You may have actually done everything right in the interview process. And this rejection may have absolutely nothing to do with you. There are many reasons why an employer rejects you. Maybe they can't afford your salary or, or maybe another candidate has a more fitting skill set. Maybe the job has been put on hold or the company has really decided to go in a different direction. There could have been an internal candidate that received the job. Sometimes rejection is simply out of your hands. Yes, it may seem like some people get all the breaks, but those are rare exceptions. Take comfort in knowing that so many others are experiencing similar feelings of fear, stress, and even bouts of depression. If you've been out of work for a long time, if you've never worked outside the home, or even if you're, you're more senior in your job level, job search can take a very long time, several months, maybe even more than a year. And everyone gets rejected at it at some point, and you will too. To crush this rejection, you might even get philosophical. Once in a while, you catch a break and you're in the right place at the right time. Usually, this is not the case. It might be hard to see in the short term, but ultimately, you will discover this was actually in your own best interest. Maybe this job, this company was just not meant to be, and there is something better out there awaiting you. Another way to crush rejection is to look in the mirror and tell yourself positive mantras and talk yourself into a success-oriented mindset. Have a list of positive affirmations and play them, play them on loop to fight back against hurdles in your path. This is merely, so some examples are, this is merely a minor setback. I will find a new job. Just because I was rejected for the job does not diminish my self-worth and value. I am smart. I am talented and I have a lot to offer. I won't give up and I will make it through this tough time. What are some other mantra ideas that you might say to others or to yourself during a tough time? Just and I mean, just anything that you that you could say that builds you up, that makes that this decision doesn't change who you are. That oh, the fact I love it. That somehow you didn't get a job doesn't mean that you're not going to get the next one, and that you know you're less qualified than you thought because you never know what the reason was. Excellent. Every Other every thoughts? no, every no is one step closer to a yes. So wow. With every, with every no, you're getting one step closer to a yes. That's awesome. Others? Any others? Thank you for those. Similarly, keep a running list of your good qualities. Rejection can sap your self-confidence and have you question your own abilities. You may start ruminating on all of your bad breaks. Left unchecked, you can slide down a slippery slope of self-doubt, se second guessing yourself and maybe even depression. Remind yourself and ask your support allies to remind you of your achievements. 
when a negative thought pops up, remind yourself of a time you succeeded. Write down your accomplishments, both big and small, maybe even post them on the refrigerator. This will remind you that you've succeeded in the past and you can prevail against all odds in the future. Another thing to do to crush job search rejection is to take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Don't wallow in self-pity or engage in destructive behaviors like binge eating or drinking, watching too much TV, taking drugs, or isolating yourself from others. Hit the pause button and stop obsessing over your situation. Find some hobbies to, to distract you. Engage in, in activities that you excel at to reboost your confidence. Maybe take some time off from job search entirely. Take a walk in the park to clear your head. Play with your children or your puppy. Set a workout routine and follow it. Listen to thoughtful, encouraging podcasts. Read books or listen to great music. Uh, uh, listen to stories about successful people that triumphed over failure and rejection to put you in a better mood. This will clear your mind and give you the rejuvenation you need. Finally, to crush that rejection, write a thank you note. Yes, I said that. Even if you feel terrible for not being selected. And this is what I learned, what I was referring to earlier, Joyce. When you've vented and done all the previous work mentioned, then sit down and write that note. I never thought about that, in, especially if you've been ghosted. But if for no other reason, this thank you note gives you the opportunity to fully complete and move forward. Other reasons to write this note are that it shows you are professional and courteous even when things don't go your way. This may actually really impress the company who just declined or rejected you. A polite and thoughtful response may keep you top of mind for any future opportunities they think you could be a better fit for. It also gives you yet another chance to ask for and gain valuable feedback. It certainly expands and continues your network. Everyone you met along this interview path is now part of your current network. So you certainly don't wanna burn these bridges. You want to leave the door open. Continue to network with the interviewer, connect with them on social media or LinkedIn perhaps. If they are impressed with you, they may even recommend you to other people in their network. What to include in a, in a strong job rejection response or thank you note? Your job re re rejection response should be short and courteous as you professionally express your disappointment in not earning the role uh, your, your appreciation for the opportunity and your gratitude. Be sure to include a formal greeting. Thanks for their consideration. This reminds them how polite and professional you are. A sentence expressing your disappointment for not getting the, the job. This tells the hiring manager you were interested in the, in the role and in, you very much enjoy the company. Stay brief and keep a positive tone throughout the, the email or the written note. Explain that you enjoyed learning about the company and would like to be considered for any future roles they may have. And if you haven't received any feedback, this is your chance. Politely ask what you might do differently to improve your chances of being selected for the next opportunity. And finally, you want to include a professional closing and signature. I'll show you an example of a, uh, a really nice thank you letter. Can someone read this? 
Dear Mr. Benson, thank you for considering me for the office manager position. I really enjoyed meeting you and your team, and I can see clearly how you are successful. While I feel that I'd be a strong fit, I sincerely respect your decision because you know what's best for your team and organization. If anything with this position changes or I may be a suitable candidate for another opportunity, I'd be happy to return for further consideration. Until then, I wish you and Mountaintop Coffee Rangers all the very best in your future expansion goals. Sincerely, Jason Mundra. Very good. In conclusion, in today's rapidly changing workplace, developing a mindset of grit and resilience is essential for crushing job search rejection. You want to see each setback as a challenge to grow both your self-understanding and your ability to bounce back and deal with disappointment. Overcoming obstacles on your career path will increase your chances of landing the right role. So make a point of staying constructive and do all you can to learn from each experience to help you get ready for the next opportunity. After all, getting turned down for a job happens to everyone. The most important thing is what you learn from that experience. Have I met my goal to pass along any new ways to cope with and turn job search rejection into positive new learning outcomes? If so, what are your specific takeaways from today's webinar? So I think you have, it, it, it's, it's hard if uh, someone get a rejection from the, the work that he applied for. Yeah. But it take it uh, need to take a time, uh, uh, maybe little time or uh, need a long time, uh, but you have to deal with this and ask the company that you interviewed you uh, what the negative thing or why you are not fit for this position to uh, collect some information if you want to apply to another job maybe it's uh, good to fix it i think that yeah so, yeah thank you not and uh, polite messages and uh, uh, res with respect with the team that you interviewed it's uh, it's more uh, important for uh, all people who want to apply for any work. Yes. Yes, thank you very, very much, Rawa. Thank you. Other thoughts? Maybe something I missed? I, I think that you're pointing out a, a delicate balance between getting through it yourself and not getting discouraged and not taking it too personally and remembering all the reasons that, you know, they may have selected someone else yes. and yet not closing any doors, you know, keeping, keeping communication open and trying to learn as much as you can. And, and, you know, if something else comes up in the future or if they know of another position, you know, yes. leaving yourself still available to that. So, you know, you're kind of balancing those two things or combining those two things in the process. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, in thinking through this uh, really deeply, Lisa, you may not be able to write an objective and professional thank you note. I, I, in doing the research, they say, oh, you should do it within 24 hours. I don't necessarily. Not if you're upset, you know. <laughs> not if you're upset. I totally agree, um, Joyce. You may need to take three days or a week, yeah. but, I, but I would still encourage you to do it. even. Oh, after no, you... most definitely. Yeah. But first yeah. I have to get over and yeah. realize no matter which way this goes, all right, which you will come after, you know, because uh, I've been through the rejection thing and, and the first rejection that I got, it, it devastated me. Yeah. All right. And it took me more than three days to get over it. I had a cry on a couple of shoulders. Okay. Yep. Somebody pat me on my back because it, it was horrible, horrible, horrible. But yeah. 
after I did reflect on it, after yeah. I did um, go through the motions and what could I have done wrong and what could I do better and 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 totally reevaluated it. Okay, I still have to find a job. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I need to buckle down and get ready for the long run. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And learn from each experience. Yes. You know? Yeah, I can appreciate what you're saying, Joyce. Um, there, there are. That's why I said there are no rules for for. Uh, I mean, people make up rules, but oh, you should do. You know, write the thank you note. It's the individual. That's really up to the individual. You know. Yeah. I you know, totally but agree. if you are, but if you are looking for a job, because. Uh, we have to, we have to pay our bills. You just, you, you know, and you're definitely going to get rejected. You know, you, you have some people that are so good at interviewing and I mean, every job they go for, you know, and, and, and it, it could, it's really, really, really discouraging when you do get that rejection. But yeah. I, I had a very good teacher tell me at one time to go for jobs you don't want. All right. And and it builds your confidence. Yeah. Believe you me, it does. You know, it gives so, you that practice. Yes. Get that get that practice in. All right. Yeah. Because, you know, you, 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 you are it's one out there for you, but you got to you. It don't it's not going to come knocking on your door. Yeah. Yeah. It's like any other skill, too. Yeah. Interviewing is yeah. a, a, is really a skill that needs to be practiced time and time yeah. again. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies, for participating this afternoon, and uh, have a great uh, rest of the day. Oh, thank, thank you. you. As always, I enjoyed it. So yeah, have a very good. Day. good.